a clarion call to, quote, walk back from the edge of the abyss. That's from conservative stalwart Liz Cheney just last night at an event in Iowa. Liz Cheney had scathing words, not just for her own party, for, quote, abandoning the Constitution, but also for the United States Supreme Court, the nation's highest court, for potentially paving the way for Donald Trump to avoid going to trial for an attempted coup plot against the United States government. Cheney urging the Supreme Court to grasp exactly what it is doing by slow walking the Trump immunity case, where he is claiming that he's immune from prosecution for the insurrection because he was acting in his capacity as president. Shut up, bitch. I'm sorry. I just can't with these people. MSNBC puts the absolute worst human beings on its platform. These are the first people who are willing to scream misinformation and label everybody else as being those who purvey misinformation. Meanwhile, these morons are absolutely the worst purveyors of misinformation anywhere on television. The problem is, They've gotten very, very good at spewing their Pablo. So good that the average person can't even tell the difference. In that 30 second open that I just showed you, Nicole Wallace, the mommy blogger, the soccer mom, she looks so unassuming, smiling at the camera while lying to you directly, having no problems lying right to your face. And on this show, the one we're going to be talking about, she features the, the ultimate rhino, the Trump hating Liz Cheney. In this piece, the two of them talk nice and they smile and they act as though they're saving democracy, all the while trying to smear Donald Trump. And in turn, acting like they have your best intentions at heart. They're looking out for you at home. I'm not sure their audience would even care, but in this video, I'm going to show you how an actual fact checker could shred these morons. Oh, and make sure you watch today's video to the end. I have a very, very special announcement. Let's begin, shall we? A clarion call to, quote, walk back from the edge of the abyss. That's from conservative stalwart Liz Cheney just last night at an event in Iowa. Liz Cheney had scathing words, not just for her own party, for, quote, abandoning the Constitution, but all whoa, 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 stop there. Now, understand, fact checker would step in and go, who's abandoning the Constitution? Has there been any declaration by any Republican anywhere that says they are abandoning the Constitution? Also for the United States Supreme Court, the nation's highest court, for potentially paving the way for Donald Trump to avoid going to trial for an attempted coup plot against the... I'm sorry, you see how she just slowly weave that in there. What was the attempted coup plot? I, mean, I know they've talked themselves into it. I know they've talked their audience into it, but do you see how they script it so nicely? The attempted coup plot, nobody, nobody challenges what they say. United States government, Cheney urging the Supreme Court to grasp exactly what it is doing. By so she doesn't think that the Supreme Court, the nine justices on the Supreme Court don't exactly know what they're doing. They don't know. These are unintelligent people. Well, I mean, you got Katanji Jackson on there, but at least eight maybe. No, there's Sotomayor there. So there's seven, maybe seven people have actually a head on their shoulders, but they don't know what the hell they're doing. Okay. Low walking the Trump immunity case, where he is claiming that he's immune from prosecution for the insurrection. Very slowly, smile, pretty woman. He's, you know, the insurrection. What insurrection? Can anyone show me where there was an insurrection? What, you know, when you use terms like murder, he murdered somebody. Those are criminality, criminal terms. That means a crime was committed. Has anyone ever been charged with insurrection? You should let me know. I'm not sure anyone has been charged with it. No, I'm positive nobody has been charged with insurrection. Because he was acting in his capacity as president. So you can see right there how they just flow, how their workflow of their script just works. And they weave in all the things they want to tell you, that they want to, you know, basically hypnotize you with. Insurrection, attempted coup, Supreme Court doesn't know what's going on. And if they just keep saying that over and over and over again, you know, it's been working. Their audience thinks there was an insurrection. Their audience think there was an attempted coup. And their audience thinks that, you know, the Supreme Court doesn't know what they're doing, except when they rule in their favor. Doesn't make any sense. So now we're gonna listen to Liz Cheney. We're gonna go through some of the stuff that she says, which is, whew, 
out there. Let's go. Very important that the Supreme Court recognize that what he's doing is a delaying tactic and that. Hmm. So the Supreme Court can't recognize what Donald Trump is doing is called the delay tactic. So let me ask you, ladies, I'm not sure if you're an attorney, but is there anything that Donald Trump is doing that's not part of the, the legal process. I mean, did he invent something? Did he, you know, pull a fire alarm in a building? Oh no, that was a Democrat. Hmm, so he couldn't have made a delay that way. Um, did he actually, you know, puncture the tires of the prosecutor coming to the courtroom? Mm, no, he didn't do that. Um, did he file motions? Yeah. Are, is he allowed to file motions? Absolutely. So he's taking advantage of the legal process, correct? Then shut up. That the American people, it, it cannot be the case that a president of the United States can attempt to overturn an election. Okay, two things there. The American people, she's speaking for you. She's speaking for me. She believes all of the American people that, you know, you need to understand, I'm here to protect you. I'm working in your best interest to let you know that Donald Trump is a bad dude. It's a really, and Supreme Court justices, you need to know too. It's a, he's a bad dude. Be careful with him. I'm the one, me, Liz Cheney. I'm the one who needs to make sure that you know this. And I can talk very softly and say it, just so long as my point gets out there and it gets on MSNBC and it just gets out into, you know, the eyes and ears of the insane public who buy this BS. And seize power and that our justice system is incapable of holding a trial, of holding him to account before. Why is the justice system incapable of holding a trial? I, I haven't seen that. Litmus Cheney, can you tell me how the justice system is incapable of holding him accountable? For the next election. That cannot be the case. So now we know. It's not that they can't hold him accountable. They must do it before the next election. It is of immediate importance of the highest relevancy that Donald Trump must get on trial before the next election. I don't know. I, I dabble in some reading of the law, but I'm not sure I've ever seen anything in the Constitution, anything written anywhere that says, hey, listen, if we're going to try somebody, we have to do it before an election. You're, you're welcome to forward me any information where it says that you have to be tried before an election. It says the defendant is it must have as part of his rights a right to a speedy trial, but it doesn't say anything about, hey, listen, you need to do this before an election. That's just her talking to you, saying it's got to happen before the election because we can't possibly have this man as president again. Taking action that will result in further delay um, in preventing the American people from seeing that evidence in open court. Whoa, 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 whoa. Further delay from the American people seeing evidence in an open court. She actually just said that. So if some of you who may not know, there were six thousand plus hours, maybe even more than that, maybe a hundred thousand hours of, of videotape that they withheld from the impeachment hearings that they televised so that the American people didn't have to see it. But now she's calling for, you know, speedy trial, get it in there, do it before the election because people need to see this. But just, you know, a year ago or so, she didn't want you to see it. In fact, they did everything they possibly could to make sure you didn't see it. They withheld all of that until Tucker Carlson started putting it out there. Then they tried to do all kinds of things to him to stop him from showing it. And in, in fact, getting Fox News to fire him and then going crazy when he got on X slash Twitter with Elon Musk. She's so full of shit she can't even see straight. But she's saying it in a nice voice that the American people need to see it. Well, I didn't see MSNBC looking to broadcast all those hours of tape. Why not? The American people need to see evidence. Well, here's your evidence of the so-called insurrection, but you didn't show it to anybody. You, you, you decided you didn't want anyone to see it. MSNBC didn't show it. NBC, CBS, ABC, even Fox News, nobody showed it. So how could you want the people to have all this information now, but you didn't want it then? Is itself uh, suppression of the evidence that the American people... She actually said that again, suppression of evidence. 
while she was one of the main suppressors of evidence. But you probably don't know that if you watch MSNBC. People have a right to see that evidence. and, and Yeah, we had a right. Why did you not allow us to see all of the January 6th footage? Why did we have to take your word for it then, but now you want to hurry up, get it in trial, get it in front of the judge, and again, pick and choose which pieces of evidence you supposedly have for people to see. And, and the court ought to recognize that. So she says that just very calmly. And, and I just pointed out that I want you to see the delivery. There's a way emphasis is put on certain items based upon someone's delivery. She's acting. She's talking very calmly. She's soothing. She's making you feel that I'm just a mom. I'm really concerned, mom. And I really don't want Donald Trump as president. And, and the people, the American people would be better if they actually saw more of the evidence and if the Supreme Court worked on your behalf the way they're supposed to work to get this thing to trial. Meanwhile, she might as well just be screaming. She might as well just be a banshee out there because they're terrified of Donald Trump winning. Absolutely terrified. So let's go back to Nicole now, who's going to, you know, basically give an intro to another clip. That be the case that our justice system is incapable of holding him accountable from Liz. Incredulous. Our justice system is incapable of holding him accountable. Would that apply to anybody else? I'm, I'm just wondering if our justice system is incapable of holding anybody else accountable. I, I, could, I could think of somebody. Cheney, she's talking to you, Supremes. She's saying that there is a threat that the courts are now enabling Trump from avoiding to avoid all legal accountability and now notice what she said she she said there's a threat she threw that word in there very psychological making you think hey be afraid here there's a threat be afraid there's danger 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 it's a threat that donald trump could be elected very psychological in their approach because more than three years after the insurrection the voters there it goes again. You know, it's three years after the insurrection. What insurrection? The one you guys just made up and decide to call it an insurrection? Because as far as we all know, there's been no insurrection. But every single day in just about every single newscast, we hear these people keep saying overthrow, coup, insurrection, when none of it has been proven or true and no one has been charged. Just do not have access to a full accounting of what happened. And then Why would that be? Think about that. You're on a broadcast news network and you're saying that the American people don't have access to a full accounting. Since it's been three years ago, why is that? Why do the American people not have access to a full accounting? When's the last time Nicole Wallace or anybody at MSNBC actually did some journalistic Due diligence. Well, Donald Trump is one step closer to the presidency now, thanks to a political party that has nominated him and continues to enable him. Here's what Cheney had to say about that. Okay, so the political party didn't have a choice in nominating him. The voters did. See how she just went past that too? Because someone should raise their hand and say, hey, listen, um, there were primaries. Donald Trump won these primaries by like 82, 83%. He was the person the people wanted. Isn't, the, isn't that the very essence of democracy? Isn't that basically democracy on display? But no, she said the GOP, the Republicans nominated him. No, they didn't. We did. To her fellow Republicans. Wait, 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 wait. Fellow Republicans? Liz Cheney got voted out of office by, she got beat by like 32 points. She got absolutely obliterated. Fellow Republicans? She's not a Republican. Either you, Nicole Wallace, you say you're Republican, so you can try to think you've got diverse opinions on MSNBC, but we just saw you don't. And, and Ronna McDaniel isn't even someone we would all embrace as being a true Republican or conservative, but you couldn't even take her onto MSNBC. Who are you trying to kid? Created a situation where um, I think voters thought, well, you know, it, it must not be that he's that dangerous, because if he were, then, you know, you would have more people saying so. You all say so. How, how could people not think there would be more people saying so? Every single host on MSNBC, every single host on CNN, a few hosts on Fox News, every single host on NBC, every single host on CBS, every single host on ABC, they all cast and paint Donald Trump as the boogeyman. So how would we not know? What, what more voices would you want to have 
push your point of view? How, how many people you think need, need to tell us what your perspective is? The problem you're not accepting is we don't believe you and we don't care. We see the man. We understand what's going on in this country. We go to grocery stores. We look at television. We watch the news. We can see the border. I don't need your perspective. I got eyes. Unfortunately, that's what you're trying to stop. And, um, and I, look, I think the Republican Party leadership itself um, had to make a choice. Uh, many times they were faced with a choice between uh, you know, doing what was right between furthering the democracy and, and, and the Constitution or embracing Donald Trump. And, and So how would you further democracy and the Constitution by not allowing someone who's getting the votes from the American people to run for president? T tell me how you're going to approach that. That seems to me to be the antithesis of democracy and the Constitution. Hey, we can't let this guy even run. You guys here in the Republican Party need to do something to stop this guy from running. How does that sound democratic? How does that sound constitutional? You're, you're, you're basically telling us right now you don't want to follow the Constitution. You don't want a democracy. They chose Donald Trump. Cheney also saying that people should make no mistake. A second Trump term will not look anything like the first Trump term. I hope it doesn't. There will be no more adults in the room. No <sighs> See, a, a real fact checker would say, excuse me, um, Nicole, I understand that's an analogy, no more adults in a room, but who's the, who are the adults in a room right now in the White House? Because obviously we know there's there's somebody pulling strings to this puppet. Who who, who are the adults right now? Because you, you feel like you know you're the soccer mom, you're the mommy blogger, you know, you're 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 cute and you're trying to tell us, you know, you you got us in your best interest, but you're full of shit. And in the administration will stand in the way of Trump shredding the United States Constitution. And Okay, see that? So now she says Trump is, there's no one that will stop him from shredding the United States Constitution. Maybe what you're really afraid of is him actually holding up the Constitution, being that person who puts that Constitution first and understands this is what we're here for. This is why we are the United States. That's what you're afraid of. It's not because you think he's going to shred the Constitution. No, your your boy's doing a good enough job of that already. What you're con con concerned with is going back to actually having to follow the Constitution. Instead, Trump, by his own admission, will install crackpots. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Fact check, F time out, time out. Um, Trump, by his own admission, is going to install crackpots. Who are these crackpots that Donald Trump by his own admission, stood up and said he's going to install. Did you actually do a speech that I missed where Donald Trump said, hey, you know what? I, what I'm gonna do is when I get a cabinet put together, I'm gonna make it all crackpots and nut jobs. That's what I'm gonna do. No, that speech was never made. She's ringing a bell for people who just have no clue what they, what, there must be just complete imbeciles who listen to the people on this show. More than willing to do his bidding. It's important um, to, to recognize for example, uh, what it would mean to have a president who refused to abide by the rulings of our courts. You have to understand what it would be like to have a president who doesn't abide by the rulings of the court. Whew. Did she not realize the Supreme Court said that the president couldn't forgive student loans? And they keep going on television saying, not only have we, have we done it anyway, but we're going to do even more. I mean, that's just one instance. Hey, listen, I understand that you guys need to get some money here because it's just too much burden for you to pay. So we're going to just go ahead and eliminate student loans. Hey, man, but the court said you can't do this. I don't care. We're going to get rid of those and we're going to get rid of some more. But the, the court system, we have to listen to what the Supreme Court says. No, that's only Donald Trump. That's only Donald Trump. Oh, okay. I must have, I must have missed that. And um, when, you know, you have a situation where uh, the reason that our courts have the power that they do and that they have to have under our constitution 
is because the chief executive enforces their rulings. The court. Just think how stupid the audience that she's talking in front of and the audience of NBC who's sucking this up, MSNBC, where she's saying the CEO, the president, the chief executive officer of America must abide by what the Supreme Court says. Uh, <laughs> how could you be that obtuse? How could you look in a camera just so softly and just say, you know, president must abide by what the Supreme Court says. And if Donald Trump gets in, he's never going to do it. Your guy's not doing it. Yeah, yeah, it's different. That, that's different. We're, we just have to make sure that Donald Trump doesn't do it. But he's never not abided by what the Supreme Court says. Your guy keeps doing it. You see this? You see how they're, they're basically gaslighting the entire country. And all you have to do is listen to what Donald Trump says. Look at the filings that um, that his lawyers have made in the immunity case and others. Mm -hmm. um, he, you know, the, the moment that the court rules in a way he disagrees with, he will just ignore it. He'll you think so? I, I think there were a number of courts who wouldn't even take up the falsified voting. Wouldn't even look at it. Sorry, we're not even going to look at it. No grounds. No grounds for appeal, nothing. We're not gonna take it out. Pretty sure he abided by it. Pretty sure he raised the question, had substantive evidence brought in front of people and the courts all said no. And as far as I, I know, uh, on January 19th or 20th or whatever, uh, the new president was installed. So what exactly do you mean that he won't abide by the rules of the court? I think that's also important for people to understand. Um, you know, he, he will appoint people who will do his bidding. He will appoint people, um, and if they are nervous about doing his bidding, he'll offer them pardons. I didn't know she came onto stage with a crystal ball. See, right now what she's doing is projecting. That's also another psychological trick. I'm gonna tell you what my fears are, and I'm gonna tell you that's what's going to happen. That's called projection. Donald Trump hasn't even named his vice president candidate. Nope, hasn't even done that. So who are all these people that he needs to do his bidding because they'll get pardoned for basically breaking the law? That's what she just said. There would be no pardon needed if you didn't break the law. So what she's actually telling you is that they're gonna sue the heck out of everybody working in the new Trump administration and make their lives complete hell, just like they made his life hell, to make sure you know. She basically threw a, a, a missile out there and said, I hope you know what's coming. We're, we're just gonna charge you with everything we possibly can in every jurisdiction that we can and make you spend your life savings trying to defend yourself and hopefully we're we're gonna do it in local courts because now we don't want him to pardon you. That's what she's saying. These people are sick. Um, and and he won't he won't leave office. I mean, just think about. We know he tried once not to leave office. Did he try not to leave office? I don't remember that happening. I understand that's the narrative that you want to push, but we all know that he never said that. Um, and, and he will have no incentive to guarantee a peaceful transfer of power and to leave office if he's elected again. Okay, so that was the basis of her speech. She basically just lied, projected, used all kinds of psychological manipulation to let the audience feel she was there as a concerned citizen, a concerned woman, you know, who, who just wants to let you know that the democracy and constitution are in peril. Oh, she's got it shredded in her own office. Republican joining a now bipartisan all hands on deck effort to protect our democracy and prevent an unrestrained Donald Trump from ever returning to power is where we begin today. So notice what she said. Their objective, she just spelled out, is to stop Donald Trump by any means possible from ever returning to power again. That is probably the only honest thing she said in that clip. You have to realize, just listening to what these people say, what they mean, they are so terrified of Donald Trump. They are so terrified of you. They think that you have to change your mind. You have to wake up. It's up to them to change your mind to let you know what's best for you. You don't know. You're not smart enough. You're not intelligent enough. We know better. We are there to look out for you for democracy and to help the Constitution. By the way, there's another four or 5,000 person caravan headed up to El Paso to storm the border. And yet, Nicole Wallace, nobody at MSNBC, and definitely not Liz Cheney, 
say anything about it. I'm pretty sure in the Constitution, it's up to the president to protect and defend America. And he's not doing it, and they don't say anything anything about it. That should tell you everything. So I told you I had this big announcement to make at the end of this video. And if you're still here, you might win it. So next week, I'm going to be giving away a brand new Donald Trump hoodie. Nice hoodie. Oh, look at this hoodie. Yeah, there's the hood. Trump, make America great again. You want this? Tune in Monday for the, you know, the giveaway or how to win, actually. I'm going to be giving away yeah, quite a few of these. Nice pretty sweatshirt keep you warm at night so tune in monday we're gonna start doing a giveaway and leave me a comment let, let me know what you think about these nutty rhinos and of course i know how you feel about msnbc talk to you soon